What is up guys? Today I'm going to be reviewing a 2008 Lexus LS 460L and uh, I purchased this vehicle from Lexus of Southampton in July. It's uh, It's been a great everyday car um, while the Subaru is in the shop which is over there but you can't see that. And uh, so I'm just going to show you around it, um, go for a drive, all of its quirks and features things I like about it. So the first thing you notice about this car is how simply how long it is and that's because it has the L package which is an LS 460L. So this car came with the LS 460 model and also the LS 460L which is uh, emblems right there and uh, so what that does is it adds extra space in the rear um, rear passenger footwell so you get more rear rear space and that makes for a better uh, chauffeur drive but instead, I'm just using it as a single person car. <laughs> um, so this car um, has crazy backseat room. I didn't vacuum it, but uh, so if you get in the car here, you can literally like lie down. And I haven't even put the seat all the way forward, which you can do with these two buttons here. But that's another cool quirk. Um, if you put the, you can move the seat forward and then it turns into a car, a chauffeur car. And you can practically sleep in here. I mean, it's so comfortable. And then uh, you can put the center armrest down to uh, reveal all of these cool buttons and switches, change the radio, change the uh, temperature, the seats, you move it to right and left, depending on what seat you would like, and uh, the temperature and then uh, which way you want the air coming from. Now this is all very cool, but uh, it's not as cool as the gauge cluster, which I will show next. So a lot of cars from these time, this time period had uh, these um, plain, like normal, um, like these plain normal gauge clusters that were just old, old fashioned and uh, no breakthroughs had come out yet. And this car isn't completely LED or uh, electronic in any way, but I think it out, it outdoes the competitors because I've been in the, uh, com the, in the equivalent Mercedes and BMW and they, and they're not even close. And especially with the space, like the front, um, the front seat ha passenger has plenty of room. Um, there's a cubby hole here for, uh, I use my phone to uh, play music. And then there for some change, and I put, I usually put the key there. But uh, for this video, it is in here and uh, there. And you'll notice they, Lexus tries to cover up as much, as many things as possible, just to not, not, not to confuse their older customers, because uh, that's a big selling point for them. Their older customers purchase these vehicles um, excessively. I don't know about excessively, but they, they're the majority of the buyers of this vehicle. And uh, actually the, the person who owned this car previously was 92 years old and only went to the golf course with it. So uh, that was pretty cool. And it's only got 38,000 miles, but we'll get to that. Um, it's got a 4.6 liter V8, which I'll show next, but uh, first I'm gonna show the gauge cluster. So first you put your foot on the brake. It's got a start stop system with a push and then you uh, push it and the gauge cluster comes on. It slowly appears. And I love that. I love that. I just think it's fantastic. And it shows you in here, you can, uh, you can change the display to MPG, which is not that great considering the vehicle. Um, you can see the current MPG. So when you're on the highway, you know when to let off or, or uh, floor it. <laughs> it depends what you want to do. Um, it's got after refueling, so that's a bit better, 16.2. After refueling, I've gone 111 miles, and that's the amount of time. Average speed, that's not accurate. <laughs> uh, and then it checks your oil, oil. I mean, uh, tire pressure for you, including the spare, so that's very nice as well. I usually keep it on, uh, on this one just because, you know, it looks the cleanest to me. But I'd like to just point out how, how cool this gauge cluster is because it, it looks as if it could be electronic, but in the sun, you can't see it, but there's a small dot in the middle 
on all of these clusters. I mean, it's not even small, but it blends into the background so well that you can't even see it. And what I also love is, uh, is how the, uh, oh, the Jeep, this is actually touch screen. So I can uh, go to the map. I can go on map view and then I can, uh, no, that's not it. Um, destination. And then I can put in, put in an address and then I put in the house number and etc. So that was, that's pretty cool as well because not many cars at the time had the touch screen. Like Mercedes uh, had, uh, had the toggle switch here, which must have been very confusing for their older drivers, for, uh, I mean, uh, Lexus's older drivers. And uh, here you got the uh, auto mirror in when it turns off. And uh, I like this button a lot, which a lot of vehicles don't have nowadays, which is the... Uh, it moves the seatbelt up and down, which I think is very cool because, you know, seatbelts tend to uh, cut into your neck a lot and it's, it's not comfortable. And uh, it's got a digital clock right there. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic vehicle. Um, I really love it. And uh, these things are, are dropping in value very quickly, which is kind of why I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> so... Um, I'd like to also point out when you turn off the car, how, how it, it, it's almost like a little, it's a step-by-step -step thing that happens. And, uh, so if you turn it off, the numbers go away, but the, the actual, the, the, the gauge, uh, the, the dials, the needles, they stay on. So I think, I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, so up next, I'm going to pop the hood, show you guys how well Lexus shows their motors. I don't think I got the right latch. That's a fail. Oh, hold on. This is something I don't like. There's no latch. There's just, uh, you just have to get in it and lift the hood. Like so. So, Lexus try to hide every single fact that their car is a machine. And uh, in this one, it's no different. Um, it looks like it has this plastic cover, plastic covering, plastic covering, all just plastic covering. The only thing you can see is uh, the dipstick, <laughs> and through there you can see um, alternator, I think that's there, um, some other interesting stuff as well, but there's really not much to see, which is, uh, it's quite nice actually, and I'd like to, I also like this vehicle because it was pre, it was before they used the spindle grill design, which uh, made the grill, um, it made the grill go angular, like in again, and then like out. So I, I'm not a fan of how that looked, but uh, this was right before that. So I think it looks really nice actually. And uh, around to the back, I think it looks way, I think it almost looks like the 7 Series, but uh, it's a bit better in my opinion due to it's like swooping, swooping curves, where that's the 7 Series kind of came straight back, but this goes like at a curve. So I think that's really nice. Now for trunk space. Oh, I don't have a key. Smooth, smooth. Right, so the trunk is not as good. It's just not. It's not as spacious as a, uh, as the competitors in no way, shape, or form. And that's due to the L package, which actually takes away from trunk space. I'm pretty sure. And uh, I'm, don't 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 mark my words here, but I think it takes away space from the from the trunk and puts it into the passenger or the the rear seats seat footwell. So you get more legroom in exchange for trunk space. So don't mind all this 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 junk here. 
But uh, if you'll if you'll see, it's really not that big, but uh, it'll do the job because it's got a lot of height. Like it's, it goes like all the way up to to here, and that's all the trunk space. So that's really nice. Where the uh, was a shifter, which uh, put into drive, you can move over and manually select gears, which I actually use quite a bit, except I usually slide it over and put it in sport shifting instead of that, because uh, it makes pulling out onto some roads very, very fun and a lot easier. So uh, I'd like to also point out the the spotlights, which are very nice, and uh, sunglass holder, which mine are in there. Put it back into park, and uh, this height high button means the seat go. I mean the the car raises. So if you're going over some off-road terrain or anything, which I don't know why you'd be doing in your Lexus LS 460L, you have the option to do so. And um, here is uh, the suspension. You can put it in comfort, normal, or sport. I usually use the car in normal just because uh, it's way it's way more comfortable than the comfort plus, which is that button, because uh, this makes the suspension really, uh, really soft, and uh, honestly, I'm not a fan of it, because it bounces around a little bit, and uh, the normal really isn't that, that much, that much stiffer, so uh, the car also has a snow mode for the, for the, uh, for the engine and transmission, which means uh, it's going to start off in the second gear instead of first gear to reduce or eliminate wheel spin, which is very nice. Or you can put it in power mode, which means your throttle response is going to be much better than without it, or normal, which means the car, it might be a bit laggy with its acceleration, but uh, it really shouldn't be a problem. And uh, here you can move, you can make your seat as cool as you want, you can adjust it, you can make it normal, or you can make it hot. And then when you're done, just push it back and you're good. This car also has um, the lines in the... Uh, in the in the rear sun, the rear uh, windows have the blinds, and uh, so does the rear. So this car is very nice, and look at how dark it just got. Like th that's fantastic. Like I know for a fact that the uh, I, I don't think the Mercedes had that at the time. It might have. I, I think it had the rear sunshade, but not the sides, and I really like that feature. It's also got a, a sunroof, which opens up nicely. And, and I like this one because it doesn't go on top of the car like a lot of new cars. It actually sits in the roof of the car, which I think is really nice compared to having to see your sunroof open. Close that back up and you can have it open, but, uh, but not open. <laughs> have, the have the first layer open or not, you know, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to uh, mount my mount my uh, my phone mount and I'm going to take it out for a drive and I'll show All you. All right, so going out for a drive in the Lexus LS 460L. And over the course of this uh, road test, I will be using the comfort mode, sport mode, normal mode for everything. Just making sure I fully cover this vehicle because I truly like this. I really love this vehicle. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna cruise. I'm on my, I'm on our street, so I don't wanna go too quickly. But uh, I'd like to just say, well, my Subaru was in the shop last uh, last week, all the whole week. So I, I re we really didn't have any fun cars to drive. So I, I, uh, I gave this thing a shot and I'm like, what, how can it hurt? You put this thing in sport and the suspension, it corners flat. Like I wasn't suspecting, I was, I was expecting it to just sit and like lean and everything, but it, it's really corners flat and that's in sport, but not in a, in comfort, it, it, it leans. Yeah, it leans. I also like this vehicle due to it. It's it's not trying to uh, be a performance vehicle whatsoever. It is it is solely and o its only purpose is to be as comfortable and luxurious as possible, and and it, it it does that properly. Like the seats, I don't know if you can see that, but the seats, they barely bolster you. They're sit they just uh, they're almost like couch seats. It's fantastic and like. A lot, the new Lexus LS 500H, I've driven it, and uh, 
It's got a 10 speed automatic with a V6 hybrid. It's got less, 30 less horsepower than this car and it's heavier. So you can probably imagine how I felt when I drove it and the engine, it honestly sounds like a 350Z because it, uh, you, you get it up to the higher RPMs and it's just like and it, it, it's just not, it sounds terrible because uh, the 10 speed automatic just kills it because you're constantly, constantly changing gear and it's not as good. This car has an eight speed gearbox, which is a lot, except it has a V8 and you can, and you can manually select the gears if you want to, which is very nice. Now, this car also has a 4.6 liter V8, which uh, pushes out 380 horsepower and I think 367 foot pound of torque. And that's, that's very nice. And it's also rear wheel drive. So uh, it's the first rear wheel drive car I've ever had except for the Mazda Miata spec race car, but that, that has racing slicks and it's impossible to slide or do anything with. Not that I've tried or anything, but yeah, you can probably get the idea that a 16 year old such as myself might have tried that. Uh, I honestly wasn't even, I wasn't even reading this, but uh, I was just doing like 50 and I, and I really didn't even notice. So I'm gonna switch the car over into comfort right now, the comfort suspension setting. It's not much of a difference, but uh, might as well try it. It's also the last day of summer, so uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, it'll be pretty cool to get back to my friends at school, hang out, have some fun, get back into the city. I don't know if I mentioned this on the vlog, but uh, or review in this case, because I might do more of these, but I'm not sure. Depends how well they do and if anyone even wants to see them. But uh, yeah, there's I can't really review any cars in the city unless unless I go to this uh, this uh, classic car LLC place or not? No, it's a different place. There's a classic car club of Manhattan, and I we're members to it. It's very nice there, and uh, they've got quite a collection of vehicles. And uh, it's very nice, yeah. They've got, uh, last time I was there, they got a GT40, a 240Z Datsun, I'm pretty sure. And uh, there's plenty of stuff there. There's Mustangs, Corvettes, GTRs. Um, so that's nice, except I can't road test the vehicle, so that's kind of a bummer. Because I'm not, I'm not old enough. You have to be like 25 to even rent the vehicle. So I don't know if it comes through the, the mic or, what, or whatnot. But uh, this vehicle is so quiet. The only thing you really hear is the noise from the sunroof. But that's really it. And that might be due to it being an older vehicle. But I, I really don't know about that. I think that's how they came. So I'm going to put the vehicle in sport. And uh, do some acceleration. I'm gonna put it in the sporty suspension or the sporty shifting setting. Take that corner. Corners very nicely and flat with the sport suspension. And I'm going to find a road and do a uh, zero to six to test. I don't know if the camera's shaking more, but it looks like it is with the sport suspension due to it uh, firms up. There's a woman with a dog and of course they're going into the road. Yeah, nice. Nobody around here values like anything doing with like to do with road like caring or anything. Like they're, they'll, they will seriously walk in a, in a row with four people and not care. Like they'll stay there even though they see a car coming. There will be four people in a line blocking the entire lane and they'll just, they'll just stand there because they don't really give a shit. You know, it's just, okay, cool. That's, just, that's stupid, but uh, cool. All right, so uh, I haven't done a, an acceleration test on this road in a long time. And I don't know if I'll go that quickly, but uh, zero to 60 should be all right.
I also turned off the AC just so uh, the audio is better and doesn't blow on the audio on the mic. But uh, it's getting hot in here. I'll say that. The audio, I mean, the, the AC blows super cold, by the way. It is unbelievable. Like, you turn the AC on and it instantly, is, it, it's like you're in the Arctic Circle. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even going to lie. All right, so we're coming to the uh, turnaround spot. There are no other vehicles on the road. And I am going to do a full acceleration test with traction control on, of course, because I don't really I don't really feel like pissing anyone off today with some tire squeal. Okay, so I'm going to try and get into a flat spot. And uh, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do the selectable shifting. I'm just going to floor it. And there's 60. This car, I, I it's so smooth with with its acceleration. It is unbelievable. Um, my I mean it's not smooth for my uh, my sticker over here which is my Instagram, Bagai Miata, but uh, it's, uh, it's quite smooth because uh, when, when, you, uh, when you put it in uh, the full acceleration, when you're really getting on the acceleration, it, uh, it shifts usually from uh, like fourth to sixth, so you're in the power band longer. So it's, it's, it's nice, it's really nice. Now, a lot of you might be saying, oh, well, my BMW is way faster than that to 60. I'm like, bro, honestly, is that as smooth? And does that, uh, that, that look as good as this or sound as good? Because this motor sounds fantastic. I, I have, and I had the windows all the way up, so I don't know how it came out on, on, a, on video, but you can really hear this car when you want to. It's fantastic. Even just light acceleration goes really well with this car. It's very nice. It's very civilized. It does tire squeal a little bit of the time, but uh, honestly, a lot of the time I just keep the uh, I keep the uh, the traction control off at all times and sport mode engaged the whole time, just because uh, either I don't have my Subaru or I feel like getting rowdy. But uh, you know. Road test is coming to an end here. I, uh, I'm pulling into my driveway here, and I'm just going to end the video as soon as I do. So th thanks for watching, guys. If you've made it all the way here, put um, an F in the comment. And uh, have a great school year. That's it.